So, Justin, this is the weirdest year in NFL draft history. It may end up being the weirdest year in NFL history. So you are a prime draft choice in this year. What are you doing and how is it different from what you expected? It's a great question. I think it's kind of tough having not gone through this before. So I, I don't really know what the whole, the normal process would be, but uh, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm just trying to work out, throw and lift as much as I can. And um, I'm here with my brothers and I've fortunately I've got two pretty good receivers um, living with me. So uh, I've been able to go throw with them, lift in the backyard and go run up uh, at the field. So uh, doing my best to take care of everything. Are you literally lifting in your backyard? Um, on my back porch, we uh, we were sent some dumbbells and some uh, some free weight. So uh, my brothers and I, we go back there and uh, lift in our backyard. Are you living in your in your home where that you grew up in? Yep. So I'm back in Eugene uh, with all my family. Uh, everyone, my brothers, and my parents are back here. So uh, it's been cool to to get to spend some time with them. What is your day like? in terms of an average day just just give me your day yeah so i'll wake up uh and so depending on the day i'll either run or lift um and so monday wednesday friday i'll lift and then thursday tuesday thursday i'll go run um and so then after that i'll throw every day of the week uh five times a week and then um generally kind of in the afternoon kind of spend it based off off the day so i've got some meetings um some phone calls to make and um and then after that, I'm, I'm pretty much done. So I kind of got to find to find some things to do, watch some film, um, go golfing when I can. A couple of golf courses are still open. So i uh, trying to hit the links a couple of times at least. And, and how cautious are you? Do you do the, uh, you know, the social distancing? How cautious are you when you're in public to make sure that you don't get too close to anybody? I've been very good about that. Um, my grandma is actually... Uh, um, she's she's been living in a home recently and and so we've done our best to kind of monitor who we've come to contact with and um, i know i think my parents are are, have done a really good job of communicating with that with us and so my brothers and i we've been pretty safe and uh we've done our best to stay away from um social events so uh, we've been at home and, and we've been outside so nothing too much in between are you able to see your grandmother um one grandmother i'm not uh her that lives in the home, uh, not able to see her, but uh, my other set of grandparents, um, I, I'm, I've been able to see them for a little bit. Tell me, what is it like to communicate with teams either via, and tell me, is it Zoom? Is it FaceTime? How, how do you do it? It's been a little bit of both. Uh, for the most part, it's been Zoom. Um, I have had a couple of FaceTime meet, meetings, so um, I've, I've gotten pretty good with the Zoom meetings and, and everything, so it's, uh, it hasn't been too bad, actually. Do you miss walking into a facility and shaking hands with Bill Belichick and saying, wow, I'm meeting Bill Belichick? It, uh, that definitely would have been cool. That would have been special. But uh, to be here, and it, it's still an honor. And to be able to go through these meetings, it's still pretty cool. So uh, going through them and doing my best and, um, you know, whatever happens, happens. How many teams have you been in contact with virtually? Quite a few, actually. I would say maybe seven or eight. Um, in the past week or so so um and then a couple phone calls as well do you have any idea who's going to draft you i have no idea it's uh it's well out of my control so whatever happens happens and, and i'll do my best and uh we'll cross that bridge when it comes do you care do you find yourself rooting for when you look at the top of the draft do you find yourself rooting or not i don't think you can i think you gotta you gotta separate yourself from it and and uh, you just got to focus on you right now. So I'm, I'm going to do my best to get better. I'm going to be a better thrower and be a better runner. I'm going to go get in shape, um, watch film, and, and do all these things that, to prepare me for the next level. And so whatever happens, happens, and um, I'll be glad wherever I go. How odd is it for you not knowing in a normal year you'd get drafted and you'd go to whatever team you get drafted to, you'd probably go the following week or the week after that, spend a week with them and then later go to a mini camp and then get ready for training camp in late July. How odd is it now to have absolutely no idea when all that is going to start? 
That's a great question because I'm not sure what's going to happen. And, and like you mentioned, heading out a, a day after the draft to go to your team and get started. Um, I don't know if that's going to be possible this year. So hopefully whatever happens, uh, I'll be able to get a jump on the playbook, um, do some studying, continue to throw with my brothers, um, and just do everything I can to, to become a better quarterback right now. You sound like you are, I'm going to control what I can control, and the rest of it, I just have to cast my fate to the wind. I think that's uh, I think that's the only way to look at it. If if you get too caught up in in what you can't control, um, you know it doesn't turn out your way all the time. So um, I'm going to do my best, control what I can control, and uh, just just do do everything I can to to become successful. Do you find yourself at all getting involved or paying any attention to? Well, you know the Bengals kind of like Justin Herbert. They'll probably take Burrow, but there's a couple of people in there who really like him or Man, the Chargers, they really like Justin Herbert. I mean, do you do you read much? Do you pay attention to much? I've actually done a pretty good job of kind of staying away from that. Um, I've never really been big into kind of reading those things and the projections and stuff like that. Um, but I've kind of listened to, to the people that are important to me and my agents, my, my coaches, my family. Um, if they bring something to me, it's generally pretty important, so I'll listen to them. But um, anything else you kind of have to filter out as it comes. Is it at all difficult to maintain your sanity these days in this weird, weird pre-draft process? It's, it's been a little tough. Um, my brothers and I, we've, we've tried to get out of the house as much as we can, whether it's walking the dog or, or going to play catch. Um, we, we've, we've done our best to get out as much as we can, but uh, it, it does get a little tough on you at times. Um, two other things I'm curious about. So when you consider – where you could go do you watch tape on any of these teams up there knowing that hey let, let me let me watch a little bit of the offense of the chargers or, or or let's watch a little bit of the dolphins and and let me read a little bit about chan gailey the offensive coordinator do, do you find yourself doing any of that or do you simply turn all of that off it's been a little bit of research, uh, kind of going into the meetings. You kind of have a, you kind of got to, to get a feel for the, the guys you're going to be talking to. So um, a lot of the coach, a lot of the uh, player personnel, people you kind of read up on beforehand going into it. Um, and then with the, with the film, they kind of send you some packets. I've got a couple of packets just kind of go through it so you get a rough idea. Um, but I haven't, I haven't sat down and watched, oh, I'm going to watch all of this team's plays or anything like that. Um, I've watched, I've scratched the surface a little bit, but uh, nothing too intense. Are you kind of – fascinated at all with the fact that your draft night is going to be probably spent either alone or with very few people and that you're not going to hug the commissioner you're not going to have a hundred thousand maniacs in las vegas screaming uh when you walk up somewhere however it was going to be done what about the whole draft night thing? Are you kind of bummed about that? Yes and no. I think uh, I think it would have been really cool to be at the draft, and it would have been really a special moment for to just be there in general. Um, and so instead of instead of that being in Eugene, and um, I've always loved Eugene, and being here is, is really special. So I know that my family will be there, and um, I think there's a limit on, on ten people max. So we'll uh, we'll figure out the rest of the five people that are coming, but. Uh, I'm sure whatever happens, happens, and um, it'll be special, and, and uh, I'm just thankful to be here. Are you uh, – is that part of it, you know, the fact that you're not going to have that? Does it diminish what the enjoyment will be for you on draft night? I don't think so. I think uh, at least I'm hoping that it'll be a great night and um, to be able to spend it with my family and, and the people that have come and – uh, support me along the way I think it'll be great and um, I'm really looking forward to it. it's it's an exciting time and um, as, as tough as it may be with with everything that's going on um, I'm going to do my best to just enjoy it and and uh, I don't think it's an experience that a whole lot of people get to go through so um, kind of realizing that and, and just being happy with uh, with whatever whatever happens. So the NFL is going to send cameras I guess to they told me about 50 players and or some college coaches and everything Will you have a camera with you in your house? And, and is that how you think you will, uh, whatever that 
that that's how you will be shown uh, to America after you're picked, wherever you're picked? I think that's the plan. I was not tasked with uh, cameraman duties, so I, I don't know the logistics of it. Um, I'm sure someone in my family was, someone was probably reached out to and talked to um, about that, but uh, they haven't talked to me. So I know, I think there is a camera coming, um, but I will not be the one setting it up. So I, I don't know. I can't, can't answer that. Justin, the last thing I would ask you is how, how is it going in Oregon? Um, how is the, is, is the coronavirus on everybody's mind? Uh, how's the state doing? How's Eugene doing? I think Oregon in general is doing pretty well. Uh, we, I think we kind of got to our, um, our governor got the message across pretty early on. So people kind of, uh, uh, um, a lot of people in mass, I haven't been to the grocery market at all, but I think people are doing a really good job of staying home, being safe. And um, I think that's a, a really good step for them to do. You know, I'll end with this. I live in Brooklyn, New York. You live in Eugene. And your, uh, your governor has sent our state 140 ventilators. So from a New Yorker to an Oregonian, I'd just like to say thank you. I wish I had a, a part to do in that, but uh, I think that's really cool. <laughs> hey, Justin Herbert, thanks a lot for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. And good luck on draft night, whatever happens. It'll be unique. Of course. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.